Schneider here in the Alaska Garden. I'm with UAF Cooperative Extension Service and Tanana Chiefs Conference. I'm here in Homer, Alaska, checking out all the cool things farmers are doing here to extend the season, like high tunnels, hoop houses, low tunnels, and also the other cool tools they're using as small-scale farmers. I'm here with Emily Garrity at Twitter Creek Gardens, and we're going to check out her passive solar greenhouse. So how do you maximize the sun and heat retention with this greenhouse? So the design of the passive solar is you want your glazing at um, an angle perpendicular to the shoulder season sun. So basically um, spring and fall equinox. Okay. And what do you use the greenhouse for? So we use it for various things at different seasons. Um, in the spring, we do all of our soil blocking and um, seed starting. And then in the summer, we'll put a summer crop. And in the fall, we'll plant a winter crop. And that's primarily for home consumption, but we can grow spinach and kale and hardy greens in there um, in the fall and then harvest them through the winter and then do the whole cycle again come spring. Wow, that's great. Let's go inside and check it out. Okay. So you've got your passive solar greenhouse kind of dug into the ground a little bit. Um, what aspects of the greenhouse help maximize the sun and heat retention? Um, so the glazing angle, like we talked about before, really maximizes the sun. And the heat retention qualities of the greenhouse are both the concrete walls, the north side being completely um, dug into the ground, so the whole north wall is covered in soil on the outside. And the east, west, and south pony walls are at four foot, and they're all concrete as well. And then our raised beds full of soil have the heat retention quality. Also. Okay, because that kind of gets the plants off the floor a little bit more. It gets the plants off the floor, yep, exactly. So down um, at the four foot level, it tends to be a little cooler. So we built the raised beds on platforms, um, which kind of doubled as a heat retention okay. technique. So it worked out well. And then you even have a second layer of plants up there. We do, we use that just in the spring for our um, transplants or our, our seed starting. And then all of those go out into the field and we remove the shelving and then we're just growing our summer crop in here. Okay, and that keeps them nice and warm up there. Yep, that... full sun and nice and warm. Mm -hmm. So I see you have a wood stove here. Do you ever have to use this much? Um, not very often, but it's really nice to have as kind of an insurance policy. Back so if up. we have a series of cloudy days or it's really cold and we have starts out here, then we can fire up the wood stove and it keeps the space warm so we don't lose our tender starts. Great. So what do you grow in here mostly, like say in the spring? So in the spring, um, we do all of our soil blocking and our seed starting mm -hmm. um, to grow transplants to go out into the field. And then it, once those are out in the field in the summer, we put um, a crop of various warmer loving things like hot peppers are, we grow in here, cucumbers, um, we've grown basil in here, sometimes lettuce. So kind of a variety of summer crops. Great. And then are you able to grow into the fall and winter at all? We are. So once our summer crop comes out, we're able to plant the raised beds with hardy greens or kale. And um, we try to get them up to a harvestable size before the sun gets too um, dim in the winter time. And then we can harvest through the winter those hardy greens. And if we get them in here a little too late, then in the spring, um, as soon as we're getting into February, March and a little bit more light, then they tend to have a growth spurt and we can harvest them really early in the spring to eat. Nice. Well, it sounds yeah. like a really sustainable solution for Alaska. It is. Yeah, it's really helpful and um, works really well for our farm as a propagation house and kind of an extra a warm climate to grow some of those diverse vegetables. Great. Well, thanks, Emily. This has been really interesting. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.